no ghost. Yeah, boo! Oh no, it's class five oogly boogly banana split Hillary Clinton erected in a century automaton. You're a nerd. I'm so excited to get the opportunity to talk about Ghostbusters. This film and franchise has been out for a while and it's beloved by generations. It was spooky, funny, witting, entertaining, and I gotta be honest, it's one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. No joke, it's one of my all time classics. But have you ever wondered what would happen if Transformers and Ghostbusters crossed streams? With both celebrating the 35th anniversary in 2019, they came together to bring us something we'd only imagine. Ectotron, an actual official figure transforming from the Ecto-1. Don't blame me for being giddy. This is the first in the line of collaborative figures. Ectotron, or Ectronomous Diametron, joined our known squad with a small story on the side. With this and Optimus Prime getting into the mood, it was a figure to transform, roll out, and kick its ass! Let's get into things starting with the box. A classic nod to older Transformers right to the back art and Hasbro label, but oozing with ectoplasm slime artwork of the character and stock images. I dig the transformation poses on top, collaborative label, and both anniversary logos. I understand if this is a continued theme with the collaborative main characters in the future, but man, missed the chance to get a ghost trap package. No complaints on the stats though. If the box seems beat up, well, that's because the collector's shop I bought it from doesn't know what they're doing. As a bonus for the collaboration, they also offer Slimer with the set. Doesn't feel completely necessary, but I've never owned a Slimer figure myself. I remember my dad had a car horn with Slimer on it, but I don't think he has it anymore. This is all made from a transparent rubbery green plastic, and while a bit of paint might bring up some of the details, it still feels ghoulish and gross, especially given the goofy teeth, spooky fat rolls, and glutinous Maximus details. Arms can move around, and while he can sit properly, there is a flight stand porthole. It's just a nice little throw-in, and something for Ectotron to take on. Plus, if you've got any slime toys, he can really slime your Transformers figures. I'm not gonna do that, though. The Cybertronian addition to the team, Ectotron transforms into the classic Ecto-1 car from the original Ghostbusters film. And for the collaboration, they took their time to paint and detail this properly. Some of it might be inaccurate, and budget might restrict a complete paint job, but this is way more than what I generally expect from Transformers. The modified 1959 Cadillac has been outdated and upgraded to fit the task of busting ghosts with all the gizmos and gadgets set on top of the vehicle. Not everything might be accurate, but according to Dan Aykroyd, there's a purpose for every component, and they took the time to paint and detail as much as they could gather. I'm no expert. What I'm saying from my own perspective is examined by someone who doesn't know anything, that being myself, but I don't recall the large Cybertronian size wand on the side. This is the robot mode accessory that can detach, but with it you could plug Shrek's head on and now he's going for a ride. Look, you could throw in a barbecue grill on top and I wouldn't argue, but the Chrysler at the bottom needs to look good and damn does it ever. This long, white, gorgeous vehicle is simply iconic to the series, down to the front grill that looks like an angry monster to me. Did you know that originally the car was going to be in black, but it was changed because it was hard to see in the dark? I think the white and red is much better. It's in line with emergency vehicles. It stands out. And white is the common kid pretending to be a ghost underneath the tablecloth color. Not everything is done super accurately, but you get the lights and mirrors all over. The sirens, painted windshield wipers, painted Chrysler logo, transparent headlights, and look at the bullet-shaped transparent red lights on the back. You know, it's the little things that make a geek feel all warm inside. Whoa, wait a minute. They even took the time to detail and paint the rims? Now that's some masterpiece energy right there. Nice Ecto-1 license plate, and they could have easily put in an Autobot symbol or Ghost Starscream in the logo, but no, baby, we're going all out on this thing. I don't mind the rubber attachments, but I'm concerned about the longevity. Also, the blue cord becomes really annoying for the back assembly to slide in. Usually, I have to pop out the legs to see what I'm doing. Alright, so I learned this while I'm working on the video. There is a tab gap right there, and a tab right here that's supposed to lock into place and make things a whole lot easier. I wish I'd known that. I'm so glad they did this version of Ecto, and not the other one. The bike. There's some small things that stand out, like the feet at the bottom or the blue cord that continues into the clear canopy, but you can see that they had to make a really solid car form. This isn't a regular Transformer that can get away with things. This is a respectful collaboration with a beyond beloved car and signature to a franchise. Even in the windows, there's no secret head poking out like Armada Sideswipe. 
Man, clear plastic windows on a Transformer toy that doesn't show anything? This is an eventful figure, isn't it? It does feel out of scale from a lot of other figures, and I'm not sure if it's meant to be in the masterpiece or they just made Optimus Prime for kicks, but who cares? It's the Ecto-1. I put it in my hands and the energy of the Ghostbusters flows through every part of me. I can feel its power. Coursing to what happened? I just blanked out. As Transformers fans, I think we can expect figures that aren't perfect. That's just how it is. But there's an extra attention to this because this isn't just for one fandom. And for that, it's so hard for me to harsh on this beautiful piece. Robot mode. <laughs> Every time I look at this thing, the Ghostbusters theme starts running through my head. Not only is this just a Transformer made from the Ecto-1, but it's a whole new character so they can do whatever they want with how it's designed. They take elements straight from the universe and throw it into the style. This does use components from the Hotspot and Onslaught mold, but that's completely fine with me if that means it'll be easier to design the car. Sure, big chunks hang off, but if it means the pretty car and pretty robot can work as one without getting in the way of each other, bring it. I even like how they preserve the car form into this mode with the front hanging off the shoulders. It might make him wide, but you want to bring out that Ecto-1 element and display it in either mode. This is a pretty big deal for people. Let them take it all in. I love the muddy tan color resembling the suits worn while the Ghostbusters are on duty, most of which does highlight the reused upper legs and arms. Low splash of red, white, and silver paint all around, but I think the best and most charming detail is the Ectotron name badge. It's like, Ghosts, remember the name. Yeah, okay, I I'm sure they'll remember a giant robot anyways, but you do you. Couldn't get something to fill in the knees? Is that too much? You know what? It's fine. No sense in complaining when you got literally the childhood dream. Head sculpt is really well done. I like the appropriate use of the goggles here. Recurring Ghostbusters equipment to get him into the theme. I don't like the face. He just looks miserable. This should be joyous. I guess busting ghosts isn't as fun as he expected. Probably the paperwork. Did someone say, ARTICULATION? Head rotate, shoulders out and in, forward and back, out and in again, forward and back again. Rotation below, elbow bend, hips out and in, forward and back, rotation below, knee joint and foot moves. Posability is pretty standard for the most part, but with the shoulders, all this chunk of nostalgia might get in the way, so it's good they gave them additional joints. Plus, you can have them straight or something more dynamic. Anyways, let's do something about this empty cavity on the back. Let's take a look at the accessories. He comes with the Neutrino Wand, a common instrument of the Ghostbusters. It can be plugged like a common Transformer weapon or slide on the back. You could clip it to the hand, but I don't want to break it like the Revenge of the Fallen Bludgeon. Of course, what wand would be complete without the Proton Pack? With the top removed and a few flips and tricks, the entire top section forms the classic pack with intentional molded detail and plug for the gold cord. Would be nice to get more paint, but Transformer, Neutrino Wand, Proton Pack. If I start complaining, I won't be satisfied with anything. I do have a question. Has it ever been fully tested yet? Tabs into the back as well as the sirens, and the blue cord plugs into the back of the wand. This is one figure that could do with a rotational hand joint, but you can make it work. And now, he's fully armed and ready for the profession. Just remember the one rule, don't cross the streams unless the plot says so. There's also a smaller peg so you can easily attach it to the back for storage. And if you want, he can hold the entire setup. You could also plug Slimer in, but he looks like he's ready for Splatoon. No, don't use that thing on me. I'm not even a ghost. That's what they all say. But the voices in my head says otherwise. No. If there's one change I would absolutely make, even if he's not perfect, is I wish we could get the Ghostbusters logo somewhere. Maybe in the arms, anywhere would be good. But I mean, he's the full package. Nostalgic, fun, charming, handsome, marry me! You could put this by himself in your Generations collection, Masterpiece collection, or Ghostbusters collection, even throw him in a glass case. 
This may not be a perfect figure, but he's a pure novelty for fans who only imagine this toy ever existing. We now live in a world where Ecto-1 exists as a Transformer toy. I don't care what the complaints are, this makes me feel like a kid again, and I have no shame in saying that. Even if you're just into one fandom, I think this will make someone very happy. Bring back Ecto-Cooler!